As we have learned from the previous episodes in this series, one of the newer techniques of biotechnology, genetic engineering, makes it possible for scientists to alter the genetic makeup of plants, animals and microorganisms by transferring genetic material from one organism to another. Modifying organisms genetically has many advantages. These include increasing crop yields, producing disease-free animals, producing new drugs and medicines. GMOs can also be used to benefit the environment by cleaning up waste material or breaking down toxic compounds. There are many ethical concerns about humans altering the genetic structure of other organisms, as well as concerns about the potential health and environmental risks associated with GMOs. It is these and other concerns that have fueled the debate on biotechnology. Yet persons on both sides of the debate agree on one thing. There is a strong desire among many people to be more informed about biotechnology, particularly genetic engineering. So, how should we go about addressing this need to be educated about the technology? We, we have to find some way to to, uh, to require that the truth be told by both sides. And we can't simply assume that just because one side is speaking that they're lying and that the other side that is speaking they're telling the truth. But how do we do that? Well, we, we put in place a, a, an agency that can, that can, that can look after the, the interests of the people and whose, whose job it is to assure public safety. And, and people who have, um, who have the, the technical in, uh, expertise in order to be able to judge what the facts are. One very interesting thing was that in Jamaica we developed a jingle. Uh, the words of, you know, that would inform about biotechnology and biosafety set to very catchy Jamaican music, reggae that really would carry that music. If you get children to be listening to this, your, your message um, and singing that, then you, you've done a lot of work. While public education and awareness about genetic engineering are necessary, the establishment of policies and regulations on the use of the technology is even more imperative. In some countries such as the UK, Guidelines and policies regarding the use of genetic engineering to produce GMOs are already in place, though each country's policies differ significantly in objectives. In the Caribbean and other countries, no adequate policy on biotechnology and its applications exist. However, scientists in the region agree that there is need for some type of policy framework on biotechnology. Biotechnology does pose potential risks. We can imagine scenarios where there may be an identifiable risk to the environment. We put biosafety systems in place to ensure that that risk is not um, unmanageable or is not unacceptable. And by biosafety system, I mean collectively, um, governments establish laws or regulations they constitute expert committees of people with the right kind of technical training and expertise who will examine um, a proposal to grow out in the field a particular GM crop. And the safety of that proposed activity must be um, accepted before that activity can begin. Decision-making on national policies should seek input from all stakeholders, including environmentalists, agriculturalists, NGOs, the general public and any other group in society. A strong national policy for biotechnology, especially genetic engineering, along with education and training of individuals to monitor and assess the use of the technology, will foster the adoption of appropriate GM technology. Indeed, a balanced, open-minded approach to GM technology with proper regulations and the safety standards will go a long way towards helping all nations harness the full, 
positive potential of genetic engineering.